I don't know if you can see the icicles behind me on the old waterfall, but it's um, so still today, it must be freezing. But it doesn't feel that cold. Now this is just a little uh, intro really to um, my other Glen Ellen video, which is number two. And that's where we took the left hand path, which is uh, very good. It's more or less level all the way, even with a wheelchair. And we travelled up to Renas Falls, put some photographs off this place from 10 years ago. It shows the devastation of the trees falling down. And um, some shots of the river when it was not in full flow, like it was the other day. So, uh, go have a look at it with me. And um, as I said, there's a lovely little cafe at the end of the street, at the end of the road. It serves homemade cakes and teas. A very pleasant lady. In fact, uh, I couldn't vouch for her because the other day I left my lights in my car there. And uh, the, um, the man in charge very kindly got me a jump started. So got me home. So go and have a cup of tea here. But walk the Glen. It's definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Bit of history of it as well and what happened to it and some old photographs you'll find hopefully interesting. And I did, hopefully you will. That's the new yurts. I stayed there yet, not up you'll have, so it's very good. Give it a run sometime though. I think someone got a hot tub as well. The chalet. As I said earlier, it's had a fire last year. Fountain. This was here in Mr. Marsden's time, I think. I mean, this is the 1850s. Looks well still. Paint it up. The noise you can hear is the old waterfall just above the playground. And that's not before. Now as they say, what a difference a day makes. I came down here the other day. So I just spent five minutes down Glen Hill. Won't take long. And uh, I'm back here today now. I did do a fair bit of video the other day, but I'm really too happy with the result. So we're not raining today. And as the song says, what a difference a day makes. On the way we'll talk a bit about the history of Glen Helen. because um, I found it quite fascinating, which is why I've come back. In fact, I found it Amy Johnson. Do you know, I didn't know she planted a tree here in 1933. Uh, not long after that, she died, actually. 1941, she died, somewhere off the Thames estuary. And, um, Lots of controversies over how she died and why she died. And some, of the, some of it seems to suggest that she may have been shot down. It obviously was in the middle of the Second World War. And then, um, the last thing she would be expecting. She was born in 1903, I think. She was still a relatively young woman when she died. She achieved an awful lot. Quite the roar that was on there. That one here yesterday. My goodness, was it strong. What's I say? No, yes. Found a picture of the thing she apparently went to Australia in, unless I got it wrong. It was a de Havilland gypsy moth and uh, a biplane, open cockpit. Imagine that. Well, you can't really, can you? I certainly couldn't. That's one little bit of Barrett.
Now the original owners of uh, Glen Helen were a guy called Moore and Klein. And Moore came from the Luddy Do estate. And then Klein had the Ballymore Mill. And uh, they bought it between them. Put a guy called Clegg in to um, run the cafe. And then um, they did well for quite a few years. Very well, in fact. So the roar you can hear to the right of me. And this little waterfall here. Swelled up by yesterday's rain. I wasn't down here yesterday, but I don't know it would have been a torrent. Now uh, when Moore and uh, Quine bought this place in 68, 1868, they paid £3,110 for the Glen was 110 acres and the farm was 170, really big. And um, that today was 360 grand, so peanuts by anybody stretch imagination. Then uh, left out the carding mill at the top of the glen to Mr. Nelson. He had it for a few years, couldn't make it pay, and um, he packed up. Then we move on to 1875 when these Manchester businessmen bought the place. I don't know who they were. Paid six grand for the place, or a whole lot, which was seven hundred eight, seven hundred grand today. So um, Klein and Moore didn't do too bad for their few years of ownership. There's six thousand pound on the place, making up to date and putting new um, bits in, refurbishing what needed redoing. So their investment is one and a half million pounds today. And mind you walk up Glen Hill today you think, who on earth has spent one and a half million pounds up here? But they did. And they've got quite excited in one year 1877 because they thought the government was going to build a railway to here. And then their average tourists to their gate was 40,000 a year. And uh, these guys didn't actually run the Glen, they used to let it out to other people. So you'd have some guy to have an ass falls or whatever's up there, and the gate, and the cafe and hotel, separate people ran them all. When these guys formed the company, they they renamed it and they called it the Glen Helen Hotel and Estate Company. Four penny, four pence to enter. And they put some shares in the market at four pounds each. Today that was nearly 500 quid a share. And um, they were selling 3,000 shares. And they did come to sell fairly regularly. Now these guys for most of their lives are making six or seven eight little pounds from this claim and um, today's money is 70 or 80 grand and they ran it right up until the 1920s and when it then went in decline and it got sold off to new owners and we'll talk about those a bit later. Well in uh, 1921 the um, Manchester businessmen decided it was time to sell up and um, they didn't see any more future in it. They um, put the whole lot up for sale and between 1921 and 1927 Mrs Gregson owned it. I don't know when she bought it but she owned it and she had a really big dispute with I think it was the forestry board but government anyway. Um, the hotel was on the car park as she come in or was in the car park as she come in. I'll stick some black and white photographs up. And um, the, as I said before, the water ran under the uh, hotel from 
Craig Willies or the Vache and it acted like a cooler for the wine and the beer. Um, but it got blocked somewhere along the line and it flooded the cellar and uh, caused the walls to crack and she blamed the uh, forestry board for that in however you want to call it. Now I don't know what the case did, it never gets settled but it went on for years and years. And then in 27 she tried to sell the place, put it up for auction. And it was bid up to £15,000, which is nearly a million pounds in 27. Um, but she didn't sell it. And um, the last sort of record I've got of a buy or selling thing was 1958, I think, when the Fosley board took it over. And they paid four grand for it. But I don't know whether that included the farm and the buildings and all of this, the ground or just part of it. So I'd love to actually check that out yourself. So there's a potted history of Glen Helen really. And um, what started out as a five minute walk up on Glen and take a few pictures and go back home was turned into something a lot more, well I find it very interesting, delving into the history of Glen Helen. And I'll put some uh, photos up of how it used to be so you get some idea. Um, at the end of this clan I said that Renas Falls. I'm not sure what I'll do that today because it will be roaring today I guess. Roaring. So there you got a pot of history of Glen Helen. Um, I got most information the Eye Museum which is free at the moment, it's a great idea. It just keeps crashing. Be a bit of a nightmare when you're out there doing something, but hey ho, I'm retired. A bit more time than I used to have. There'll be enough on this left to make a series, I think. A bit of sun has come out today, makes such a difference. Light, light shining on the water. Well, believe it or not, that is the sun. 